The providential stories of God throughout time, especially when he chooses to use weather, obviously that he controls, are just incredible. I'd like to share one such story with you. It begins in January 17, 1781 at the Battle of Cowpens. It was a decisive victory for the American Army forces uh, when they were fighting the British under General Dan Morgan in the uh, southern campaign of the Revolutionary War, the American Revolutionary War, over the uh, British Army led by just a miserable man named Tarlington, a man without a soul, a man that never showed mercy even to women and children. You may have seen him portrayed in the movie with Mel Gibson, the Patriot movie. Tarlington was just a monster. But this uh, event was a turning point in the, uh, at least the uh, reconquest of South Carolina uh, from the British and the entire American Revolutionary War. The Americans received word that the British were pursuing them. Tarlington was pursuing them. And they tried to avoid being trapped uh, between Tarlington and Lord Cornwallis that were basically trying to trap them. The day before, on January 16th, General Morgan was approaching the Broad River, which was high. There were floodwaters and it was very uh, difficult to cross. He knew that the British, that Tarlington was close behind. So by nightfall, he had reached a place called Cowpens. So he just uh, decided to stick it out and fight the British rather than continue retreating uh, at the risk of being caught by Tarlington while they were attempting to cross the river. Tarlington received word of Morgan's location at Cowpens about 3 a.m. that night. And instead of camping all night and resting his men, because his men were tired and wore out and hungry, he decided to march during the middle of the night and he arrived just before sunrise uh, and emerged from the woods in front of the American position. Tarlington ordered his dragoons to attack the Americans. The British kept attacking again and again, this time reaching the militiamen who, as ordered, had poured volleys into the enemy. But now the British, with 40% of their casualties being their officers, were astonished and confused by the militia, how well they fought. Tarlington's exhausted men had nothing left, and nearly half of the British and the Loyalist infantrymen fell to the ground, whether they were wounded or not. They just basically gave up. Uh, their will to fight was gone. Now, desperate to save something out of the battle, Tarlington managed to find about 40 uh, cavalrymen, and he rode with them back into the fight. But after clashing with the great General George Washington, he too retreated from the field. He was later pursued again by the great General George Washington, who attacked him with his saber and calling out, where is now the boasting, Tarlington? Tarlington fled on horseback while shooting George Washington's horse from under him. And now it was about 8 a.m. and the Battle of Cowpens had lasted only an hour, but it was over. Now listen what happened next. Lord Cornwallis was angry and he was frustrated that the militia, uh, you had seen that as I mentioned in the movie The Patriot where they attacked and defeated them, how they fought so bravely, our Americans. Well, Lord Cornwallis was angry and immediately he began pursuing the Americans. And here we have the story of the three rivers, the amazing miracle at the Catawba River, the Yatkin River, and the Dan River. Listen to what happened. Now Lord Cornwallis was in hot pursuit. He decided to wait the night at the Catawba River instead of crossing over. He had seen the American troops cross over just two hours earlier, but to his disappointment, 
he waited and then a storm began rushing through there that night causing the river to become uncrossable for days they got stuck at the bank of the Catawba River. They got stuck. It was uncrossable. They couldn't get over, and they literally watched the Americans walk away. Now listen to this. On February 3rd, Lord Cornwallis nearly overtook the American troops again at the Yadkin River, just down the road there. He watched the American troops again getting out of the river on the other side. Imagine that, seeing them in sight. But before his troops uh, could cross again, a sudden flood ran the river over its banks again, preventing the British from crossing again. Now there you have the second miracle. You want to call that a coincidence? Okay, let's go for number three. Now, 10 days later, Cornwallis is in hot pursuit again. Now it's February 13th. And only a few hours ahead of the British, the American troops crossed the Dan River into Virginia. And now the British had just arrived again in hot pursuit. And the river had just risen. The British were stopped again. Three times, right in a row, miraculously, rivers overflowing, stopping the British from catching our troops. Listen to what the British commander-in-chief, Henry Clinton, said and wrote in a letter. Here, the Royal Army was again stopped by a sudden rise of the waters, which had only risen almost miraculously to let the enemy over who cannot else have eluded Cornwallis's grasp. So close was he upon their rear. Well, there you have it, folks. And it wasn't much long later in October of 1781 that the British troops under Lord Cornwallis surrendered to the American troops at Yorktown. George Washington, on the very next day, called for a service to render thanksgiving to Almighty God. Do you see the providential hand of God in history? Well, it's obvious to see the providential hand of God in history for the advancement of liberty. Just think of that, those three rivers overflowing at the precise time the enemy was in hot pursuit to stop them from killing our men, our patriots that were fighting for our liberty. Praise be to God.